Welcome back to our virtual classroom, um, to our chapter four, what can the fossil record tell us about human origins? And in this video, we are going to discuss of about why human bipedalism is effective. As you saw in chapter four, bipedalism was the most important milestone that triggered human evolution. Bipedalism was an adaptation for life in the savanna. Um, eventually, after bipedalism, um, after a period of two million years, we are going to see the other characteristics that are very important in human evolution. For example, we are going to see the expansion of the brain. We, with the expansion of the brain uh, came the use of tools, and, and with the use of tools came culture. Eventually, we are going to see an expansion of the female pelvis because we are um, the offspring of the early hominins um, do the large brain, um, they have a larger skull. We are going to see the reduction of the T, of the T size. We are going to see the reduction of the jaw and the reduction in, in some facial features. So bipedalism was a very important milestone. So we need to understand what are the morphological features that make bipedalism possible in hominins. And as you know, humans are bipedal 24 seven, early hominins that were bipedal were able to do that too. So what is the difference between the kind of bipedalism that humans do and the kind of bipedalism that other apes do. Uh, from your readings, you know that chimpanzees and apes, they can do bipedal movement, but they cannot do that 24 seven. They can work for a while in, in two legs, but eventually they're gonna get tired. So there are certain characteristics that make possible bipedalism. So let's see very uh, uh, a quick list of why hominins or humans possess um, the ability to walk in two legs all the time. So humans is the only species today that is still alive that is bipedal. They do not require heavy musculature for head support compared, for example, if you see here the chimps, if you see a picture of the chimp, then they need a lot of muscle to keep the, the, the head in, um, to support their head. We're going to see that our spinal cord joins the head under the skull here. We're gonna see that we have a D-shaped pelvis, a lumbar curve in the spine, a straight lower limbs, and arch feet, very, very different to the one that other apes have. Our feet are not prehensile like the, um, like the feet of other apes. So let's see each of these characteristics in detail. The first one is the pelvis. So the human pelvis provides support for the vertebral column, provide for the attachment of the femurs, and the shape of the human pelvis allows the femurs to be attached on the front. But another function of the pelvis is to maintain a center of gravity in our body. If you see the shape of our pelvis, it is the shape in, of a ball. So the shape of the pelvis allow our organs to be balanced inside our, our bodies. So it gives us a center of gravity. It's, it's, um, it sustains our organs. If you see the shape of the pelvis of a chimpanzee here, if you see it here, so I will say it look like a bedpan. So they don't have the same support here. So they cannot maintain the balance that we have. Their organs are just retained by the muscles and tissue. And pelvis is a definitive characteristic of bipedalism. Um, I, um, if you remember, we have many early species that we are not sure that if they were bipedal because the fossil record is very is very limited. And so far we have not found, uh, we have not found a pelvis from that can tell us if those early um, hominins before the Australopithecines were bipedal. We have, um, we have uh, evidence from Australopithecines because we have 
pelvises that tell us that astrolopithecines were bipedal. So pelvis is a very important trait. The second one is the lumbar curve in the spine. So if you see here in, in, the, in, in the back of the skeleton here, they have the lumbar curve that help the pelvis and also the neck to maintain this straight um, upward position. In the case of the chimps they, they, um, they, and other apes, they don't have a lumbar curve in the spine. The circular statistic uh, is related to the way the spinal cord attached to the skull of the head of apes and humans. In the case of, of humans, the skull entered, um, the, sorry, the spine entered through the skull under the skull through a hole called foramen magnum. So in the, so that, if you see here, maintain our head in balance. If you say in the case of the chimpanzee, the foramen magnum is in the back of the skull. So the spine joins the, the skull through the back. So that is not very effective if we want to maintain um, bipedal motion all the time. So here, see the different foramen magnum here. We saw in the PowerPoint that some of the early hominins that we, uh, those that we don't have evidence of bipedalism have that characteristic, but we don't have a pelvis for them. Another characteristic is the, the femurs um, and, the, and the limbs. If you see here, here in humans, we have a straight limb with femurs angling toward the knees. The idea of that angle that we call the, the valgus angle is that while we walk, the center of gravity pass from one leg to the other. In the case of the chimpanzees, because they don't have that angle and their femurs are kind of straight, they require a lot of swaying of the trunk to move. So here you see the a comparison between the legs of a chimpanzee and the leg of the humans. This is the, the valgus angle here. And that is very important to maintain the gravity between one, the center of gravity between one leg and the, and the other while we do the walking. Finally, the feet of apes and humans are very different. Uh, we, so, uh, we said at the beginning, uh, the feet of apes, um, they have what we uh, like, a, the, their toe is like a thumb. So they have prehensile feet. They can get, uh, they can grab stuff with that. Uh, so that ability to grab stuff limit the ability to push off when walking. So that's the reason that it's very hard for apes uh, to maintain that uh, bipedal position all the time. In the case of humans of astrolopithecines, their feet were more uh, in the feet are more specialized. Astrolopithecines still have like a feet between between ape is not very very similar to ours, but it have the same functions. But the most important thing that you need to know is that the human uh, foot is designed to sustain the pressure of walking all day. He have uh, complex tarsal bones, phalanges, and calcaneus that makes walking in two legs very effective. So based on this characteristic, can you answer the question of why apes bipedalism is ineffective? So let's do this. You are at home now, so let's try to do, to experience a bipedalism. So it's not like we are going to walk like monkeys. We are going to do certain steps to cut the features that make us effective bipedal. So the first thing that you need to know to do is stand up. So everybody stand up. Are you stand up? 
Now lean forward. So you don't have a lumbar curvature anymore. So by leaning forward, you are losing your lumbar curve. I want you guys to feel those organs hanging. Three, bend your knees and bring the trunk over your pelvis. So you are losing that center of gravity that the pelvis uh, gives you by retaining the organs. So your organs are hanging and you're, and you're bending your knees. Somehow you are neutralizing the way uh, your femurs are designed for bipedal walking. Now, try to walk by swaying your trunk like chimpanzees. In the case of chimpanzees, the femurs attach to the side. So that is the reason they walk with this swaying trunk. Also, the feet that lack, um, uh, um, they lack, the, the lack the morphology to push forward. So try to do that. Try to walk around a little bit um, until you feel tired to see what you do. Um, I have done this in face-to-face -face classes and eventually people will start uh, holding walls or desks or maybe do knuckle walking. But that's the reaction that you are going to get because a bipedalism is not efficient. So how do you feel? Keep walking and try to experience this a little bit. Also, if you feel adventurous or courageous, you can share your exercise with us for some extra credit. For um, Check the activity Understand the Bipedalism for more information. So see you soon and hope you enjoy this exercise. Bye-bye.